Hey, Brett, when did you first get word uh, you're going to have an interview with the president? Uh, let's see. The first email came on Monday from Dan Pfeiffer, uh, communications director, saying they had a proposal to sit down in an exclusive interview. And, of course, you know, that's that was great news. So yeah. we started the negotiation process there and ended up on Wednesday. Uh, we started out with a little bit more time. Then we got to this... Uh, agreement that uh, we were at 20 minutes and then a walk and talk uh, scenario uh, afterwards and uh, we got in, in the blue room um, when the time started it they told me we had 15 minutes and uh, the walk and talk so it, you know they were concerned about time from the beginning and in the end how much did you get I think we stretched it because the president, uh, the last answer went a little long, but I think we got, uh, you know, like 18 something, and then uh, the walk and talk uh, was, you know, three or four more. So, hey, listen, it, we, it was great. The time was fine. It, what I wasn't comfortable with, Brian, was that he went to, you know, uh, talking points about the health care reform bill right away. Yep. Uh, on the first question. Yep. And uh, suddenly I, I looked at the clock. I looked at, you know, le listening to him say uh, what he had said on the stump just two days earlier in Cleveland. And I said, I, I got to do something. Otherwise, I'm going to get rolled. Tell me about the look on his face, the feel you got as you jumped in. And you said to the, the effect of, look, just tell me about your stand on these parliamentary procedures that you have to go through to get this passed. Tell me how you feel about the special deals. You could not get, he would not answer those questions. It was really something, Brian. And listen, you've been in these positions where, where politicians don't answer the question. But I had never seen that kind of just not specifically answering at all and then uh, getting upset that I was interrupting. And, uh, listen, I, it was uncomfortable for me. He's the President of the United States. I really want to show respect. Uh, at the same time, I, I really wanted to get answers. So and you did. Uh, Brett, uh, by the way, just for the record, I've been saying it for 35 minutes, but I, it, I thought it was excellent. He was talking about it on Fox & Friends this morning. We rolled about nine clips. But at one point, uh, were you thinking to yourself, i, I got to pull back because I'm worried about etiquette, knowing that the journalist in you, you were doing the right thing. But yeah. were you wondering, do I pull back because this is the White House? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that was going through my mind every minute there. You know, what is the line that I'm getting to? And I tried to, I, I smiled when I said that, you know, you don't like the filibuster. It wasn't a line that I went in with, um, but it just came to me because I was watching him hold the ball. And, um, yeah, I thought about that throughout the right. interview. What is the line? And it, it was, uh, you know, hopefully I didn't cross it. The reason I was interrupting is because literally there were no answers to those questions. The special deals... I, I'm not sure that he knows what's what's in it. Um, he, we finished, and he said, "You'll know what's in it when it's posted." You know, I think people have uh, concerns about that. And then on the Medicare, using the Medicare funding, the savings that they say they're going to get, the 500 billion, uh, using it twice. We're still trying to analyze his answer to that. You have this contentious interview. Do you walk? Do the walk and talk after? Yeah. Yeah, we did the walk dog ever. So there's a little, you know, we did the walk and talk. You know, the White House, uh, where you walk in on the, the the ground floor, and then you walk up to where the the cross hall and the blue room is. The interview was in the blue room, and so we had to walk from the blue room to downstairs, and it's just me and him talking. And listen, it was cordial. He's a great politician. Uh, you know, he was not, you know, agitated or. Even after the interview, Even he was Even after the interview. And, and uh, you know, we went back and forth. And I'm not going to get into the quotes of what we talked about because it's, you know, you respect the off the record once you're off the, the camera. Um, but I'll just characterize it as saying, you know, it was, it was not as contentious as that interview. And by the time we got downstairs uh, for this walk and talk, you know, he, had, he said, listen, I understand what you have to do. And um, we started on Israel and Iran, and uh, and then I threw in at the very end one of the emailers' uh, questions about Tiger Woods. So, Brett, afterwards, did the White House have any communication with you? 
Yeah, a couple of their people said they didn't like uh, how much I interrupted them. I think they helped facilitate a uh, an AP story about the number of times I interrupted the president. Right. And, um, you know, I- they said uh, he wasn't upset, and... Um, they just, you know, wanted to needle me about uh, the style. They said that they were surprised that that was not my usual style. And I said, well, to be honest, I was surprised, too. Because you... I mean, that... I'm not usually like that. However, if there's not a uh, an answer to question, you kind of... Yeah, the earthquake, the earthquake in Hawaii caught me by surprise. You know, when he, when he compared what Mary Landrew got in Louisiana, when he did not know the answer, when you said, what about the Connecticut hospital? He, what, what, what deal? What special? Connecticut deal? Yeah, yeah, he didn't even know. Yeah. Uh, people, we understand on MSNBC, they cut it up just on your interruptions. Uh, other places like National Review loved it. Other people, I'm um, just looking now, one of the top stories uh, from the Baltimore Sun, Brett Baer and Barack Obama have a standoff on Fox News. They were very fair, very complimentary. Both of you guys are engaging. I, I thought that Bill O'Reilly's interview with Barack Obama was the most revealing one done, done as in, his, in, in the campaign. I think this one, I would say, uh, Mr. President, get ready uh, for more more lively interviews. This is what people want to see. Do you think you've seen the last of the president after that was done? You know what? I, I don't think so. I mean, I think um, I think they will value the outreach to Fox News. Uh, clearly, the viewership, um, and I think. Besides this week, this monumental week where he decided, I think, that he could not answer some of those questions in order not to jeopardize the vote. You know, I think I think there were some questions that he determined he, he couldn't answer, so he was going to give talking points. But outside of this monumental week on health care reform, I think they will see a real benefit uh, to, to reaching out to Fox. At least I hope so. Here's, here's what the Baltimore Sun says. As a journalist and media critic, I salute Bear for putting the president to the test and respectfully challenging him on his contradictions and reversals and the subsequent flaws in the legislation he hopes to see on the desk, on his desk in a matter of of days. Uh, that is not foxnews.com. Uh, that's Baltimore Sun, who uh, oftentimes has a problem with us. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. I mean, I've, I've seen it all, all over the board from my email um, that I've been receiving. But listen, uh, at the end of the day, if half of my email box is uh, people who say you were over the top and you were you know, too hard, and then half of them say, you were too easy. You didn't get the answers. Uh, I think we did all right. Now, I watched you with the Shep, and you hopped on the air, and that you we aired a clip, and he said, what would you think? And you said, you know, it wasn't really my style. It was a little contentious. And at the end of the interview, you did kind of apologize to the president for interrupting. Did you feel it was necessary to do that? I did. I did. Listen, it's the office, you know. It's the office of the president of the United States. And, um, and it's awkward. I, I, I wouldn't want to do it. Uh, all the time. That's not the way that I would like to conduct interviews. I'd like to ask questions, get answers, ask questions, get answers, um, you know, and be pointed. But when you're up against the clock, you kind of have to do one or the other. You went to the radio television uh, dinner last night, right? I did. So what kind of feedback did you get there? What's probably the most more interesting? Well, I, you know what? I got some feedback from, from folks across the spectrum, and uh, that overall pretty good. Roger Ailes? He was happy, and that's the biggest part. <laughs> and the second biggest one, your wife? Uh, she was happy. She's six months pregnant, and uh, she was very happy, so that's a good night. That's good. Brett Baer, congratulations. I mean, right. I, I love the show uh, every night, It's uh, especially the panel portion. Um, you know, I love to see the outfit you wear, and I, <laughs> and I certainly love the panel at the end, and great job getting the present. Thanks, buddy. Brian and the Judge.